We've we'll talked briefly about process for delivery um, and how I go about delivering a project. So typically my projects are fully documented. Um, I, I tend to have projects that are what we would call a traditional procurement in that you've got a client and they're basically putting it out to tender and then a builder would engage to build it on and we're <coughs> engaged by the client we're not engaged by the builder so that keeps it that's generally the type of projects I work on um, the architect is generally the um, point of knowledge in all of the projects so they're responsible for the set out um, and the dimensional accuracy a lot of my clients use different software so some use Archicad there's a lot using Revit in Australia um, AutoCAD still you know SolidWorks Rhino SketchUp and I can work with any of those really um, that doesn't tend to matter uh, the builder is obviously responsible for the final coordination of the project, so they will take our drawings, the architects and the engineers, and create shop drawings and all the fabrication from that. And then the building surveyor is responsible for the site sign-off. So that's typically the way projects operate. So my process is obviously to take the information I receive from the architect and produce a set of drawings that go to tender or construction. Um, so the way that tends to work is I've put a step zero in, which is I have a, done a bit of work on my template and that's always important, I think, to get efficiency. So I've got my own layers. Um, I use my own pen set, which I try to keep, um, keep consistent. Um, the attributes, uh, I try to use attribute numbering that is not going to clash. So I tend to use very high numbers for my attributes, um, like that type of thing in the, and yeah, so then the process is I'll receive the information from the architect, go through a process of setting up the model. Um, the, and I'll talk to a bit about that because this is quite interesting. So the first thing is I always match my location to the architects so in terms of, where it sits in plan. So I'm going to model basically inside the architect's model. I always match the stories to the architect's stories because that way, if I hot link in the architect's model, then my model and the architect's model will always end up in the same place with all of the stories matching. So that's, that's those two things are really key to making sure that the models that I produce are useful when I send them back to the architect. Um, quite often, particularly when I'm using uh, models and that are coming out of Revit and that type of thing, I'll use a 2D XREF um, at each level when I'll put the plans in, and then I'll hot link in the 3D as a separate element. Um, I have the, <clears throat> the architectural layers as a layer combination so that I can see what's going on and that's separate to what I do and I set up all the views using cloning and that and that helps a lot. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware of this but there's a, um, a wireframe that you can set up in the in the actual layer combination for each for some layers so I always set up the architects as a wireframe because then I can model directly inside their model uh yeah that's enough on that the um yeah so then the first step that i go through once i've set up the model is i model the architectural elements so the walls the floors the columns and roofs that type of thing and then all the surfaces and then the engineering elements i model them second so you know all the framing that might support that roof or the you know wall or whatever goes in next pipe work, reinforcement, all the fixings and what have you. And then having guessed all that or like done an intelligent guess, I'll do an analysis on it and then basically go back and repeat through that process until I've got something that works. And when once that's working, I set up like the, the 2D drafting and annotation and the drawings, and then that goes back to the architect for them to review. Uh, and then, as it is, we go around again, you know, we repeat until that's coordinated. So go back through the architect and then 
and then finally it'll get issued to site um, or issued out for tender. So that that's typically the process that I use. Okay, here we go. Right, so this this will give you a bit of an example of um, in the model. I've got the architect's model here and the structural model is modeled sort of effectively inside it. So you can see the architect's model is in the the wireframe. So as you um as you model, you can align doors and that type of thing to the um, architect's model. And that makes it that makes it fairly efficient to do the modeling and make it accurate. And then all the all the three D um, drainage elements are done in that as well. Uh, I in this I model, which is I guess a little bit unusual. I um, I also model reinforcement, which uh, I've got. Get the scale right. Yeah, so I mod I've got my own reinforcement elements that I can model in. And then they're all 3D, and I'll show you the I'll show you the way that looks in 3D. So I can fold and bend all the reinforcing bar, um, and then the documentation. Yeah, so this was a this was a post engine concrete slab. So you can see the um, the drapes on the tendons and all the reinforcing within the within the structural element, and all of the the actual drawings that they used for the design, the actual fabrication comes straight off that. So each of those is a, a group of elements that I can edit and um, and and modify. Yes, yeah, so I can put get a group of elements and then you know change the number of bars or whatever in that group and it'll update in 3D and 2D at the same time. And then I, I can also um, you can see I'm getting the quantities of um, the mass of reinforcement at the same time. So I can use the scheduler to get all of that information out for the whole project and work out what the reinforcing quantities are, which is, um, yeah, which is pretty powerful, really. Uh, yeah, so that, I think that's a, that's a fairly good demonstration of that. The, I might show you quickly civil stuff too, because that's been, that's pretty good because you can also um, with the pipe elements that I use, they they can be dragged up and down in 3D and then you can get the, the actual elements will give the invert levels of the pipes. And so it's really easy to just connect it all together in 3D and that'll give you all of the grades and flows of the pipes. So it's all based on the whatever grade the pipe is. <laughs>